Hello and welcome. My name is Thomas and in this video I'm going to show you how to use a productivity tool I created called Raiderist alongside a number of third-party productivity apps. Okay, so a little while back, I had the chance to show you a productivity app that I created a little while back. It's actually a productivity web app. And the whole idea behind it was just to make it super simple to create a macro or kind of a bird's eye view at some of the things that you needed to do. One of the challenges, as I mentioned in that original video, which I will leave linked below, and I should also put a link above as well, is that one of the biggest challenges is that so many of these productivity tools and apps give you lists upon lists upon lists. So it just ends up to where if you've got a really big project that you're trying to get done or you've got a goal that just never seems to get accomplished, the idea with Radarist is to keep those big ideas, those big goals, those big projects in front of you so that you can always be in the process of nudging them forward. So one of the pros of Radarist as well as to some degree also one of the negatives to Raiderist is that it is extremely simple. So what I'm going to do in this video, and this is just going to be a really quick tip, I'm just going to show you how you can create your own radar list using Raiderist and use it in combination with a number of third party tools and apps and software in order to create your own super fluid uh, productivity workflow. Okay, so here we are within Raiderist. This is my nice radar list that I have going right now. So I'm not gonna go through all the features and how to get up and running with Raiderist. If you didn't have a chance, be sure to check out that previous video that I had mentioned. But let's go ahead and up here and click add new. So this is where we're going to add in a new project or goal. Remember, these are not gonna be tasks. These are gonna be big ideas. So one of the ones that I talked about in a previous one is say, maybe you wanna grow your email list to 5,000 subscribers. So what's the next action? You need to create a nice squeeze page in ConvertKit, right? And so that's gonna be where you're actually going to get people to sign up to start growing that list. And then in here is where we can kind of enter in a URL. And so this, this is actually what we're gonna be taking advantage of in this particular video. But for now, let's go ahead and leave that blank. No, nope, we don't wanna click, Never mind. We wanna click add new. So then we'll see that we have this nice new item here at the bottom of our list, but for the sake of this example, let's go ahead and bring this one up towards the top. And so this is gonna be the one that we're gonna be working with here today. So the first thing, let's say that we are uh, talking with a colleague in Slack. A lot of people use Slack these days to collaborate with the team or even clients that they're working with. So let's go ahead and pop open Slack. And say so let's let's say we've got this kind of imaginary Slack thread going right here. Now, just as a quick aside, I am working with an, an iPad. That's mainly just for the sake of this tutorial that I'm showing you. However, this will work with Mac or PC, whatever a software that you're using that provides the ability to create a third party link or a uh, external link, this should work just fine. So right here within uh, this particular imaginary thread, uh, I should be able to click this and you'll see that you've got this nice little option here that says copy link to message. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. I'm gonna pop back into this and then right there when it says, is there a relevant URL, I'm gonna go ahead and update this item. Then you'll be able to see, since I'm not logged in on this browser to my Slack account, you'll see that it's just going to open up a page asking me to log in. But were I logged in, particularly if I was working within a laptop, that would take me directly to that thread. So as I'm working on it, then I would be able to access that particular thread to reference as I'm working on that goal. Okay, so it's nice to be able to take a look at a thread or something like that, but what about an email? Let's say that you need to reference a particular email. I happen to use a email marketing service, uh, or not email marketing service, I should say email client called Spark. And one of the things I really like about Spark is similar to what we just saw right there within Slack, they offer, they offer us the opportunity to go in here and to create a public link. So I just click that, it adds that public link to my, uh, to my clipboard. Let's pop back into this particular item that we were working on. There we go. And then we're just going to go ahead and enter in that URL. Then once again, as I'm going through my day and I'm sorting out these various items, all I have to do if I wanna make sure I can reference back to that email, click that and then it will open here. 
Also, nice thing about Spark as well is that I can click the open in Spark option, and this is going to bring that directly open uh, within the app itself. So then of course I can reply to it and go through all the different elements that I need. Okay, so one of the things that got brought up uh, in the comment section of one of the previous videos that I had created in regards to Raiderist was the ability to create a list of tasks that I can then associate uh, with this particular radar item, this goal or this project, right? So that is actually something that I am considering for a future release of Radarist that you're able to create your one next action as well as a number of subsequent items after that. So you kind of got like your list of milestones to complete that particular goal or project. However, in the meantime, what you can do and what I'm currently doing is tying my other third party productivity apps to Radarist. So here's one way that we can do this. So for example, if I had a nice little base camp project that I was working in right here, I'd be able to go in here and I would be able to get a public link. Now, another thing that you can do with something like base camp really easy is that particularly if you're going to be using the web version, I'm using the app right now, so I can't show you in this, this specific example, but it's as simple as on the web version, just go to the specific project or to the task list or to the message thread, copy that URL right in your browser and then paste that in. Okay, so then let's go ahead and take a look at another option with something like things from Cultured Code. So let's say I've got this nice little list of items that I'm working on right here. Similar to the other examples we took a look at, you can actually go in here and click share. And then I can copy link to this specific list right here. So let's go ahead and navigate to another place. Then let's go over to our radar list, pop this open delete that link. Now let's paste in our new link for our things list that we've created. So I went ahead and I updated that item. Let's see, we're working. I want to say, okay, I'm ready to work on this particular project. Uh, let's take a look at all the list of items that I need to go through in order to finish this. Click that link. You're going to see it's going to ask you if you want to open this in things. You just click open and it takes you directly to that particular piece. So that's the great thing there. And then of course, as you're going through and as you're working on this uh, item, let's say you finished this particular, uh, you know, task right here, you check it off in things, then you jump on over here. And let's say the next thing is send out my first campaign. Then let's say we finished that. So maybe we wanna pop it down a few notches so we can move on to the next project. Okay, so I know that was a really simple and short tip, but I just wanted to share with you some of the ways that you can actually start to utilize Raiderist without, not, without necessarily compromising on the current workflow or the current productivity tools that you are using. I've noticed that one of the things I've been doing as I've been using Raiderist is I found myself actually tethering uh, the, the thing that I need to work on next to that Raiderist. So for example, if I need to reply to an email as a part of a big project, what I'll do, like I showed you in this video, is I'll take that Spark message and I'll put that link in there and then I'll make sure that my next action is reply to so-and-so's email. Similarly, if the next action on my radar list is to uh, you know, design initial mockups for a website that I'm working on for a client, then the link I'll provide is a list of things I need to do in a Basecamp project to get those initial mockups done. So as you can see, it's just kind of that bird's eye view. It's zooming way out of all the things that you have to get done in order to kind of help keep each of those pieces uh, on track. So if you haven't already, be sure to head on over to radar.is to sign up for your free account. As I mentioned previously, it's a totally free web app that you're more than welcome to try out, see if it works well for you. And as always, as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, if you have any ideas or any feedback or any feature requests for Radarist, I'm always open to suggestions. As I mentioned, one of the ones that I heard most frequently is that you'd like to see a list of tasks that you can attach to your radar list. So I am definitely looking into that for a future release, definitely considering it for a future version of Radarist. So as always, if you found this video useful, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.